Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Mission Impossible. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, y'all, hey. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. Woo! I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura. And we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even Tom Cruise jumping off cliffs. Crazy. Oh my goodness. Literally (laughs) insane. We love to watch. (laughs) And we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching... Mission Mission Impossible. Impossible. Dead Reckoning Part 1. Part 1. Can you believe there's been seven Mission Impossible movies? No. No. I mean, yes, franchises are a big deal these days, but seven, that's a lot. And there's going to be an eighth. (laughs) Part two. Next year. (laughs) My goodness. Um, And we've talked about this a lot because we've reviewed a lot of sequels because there's just so many sequels. Right. That's just what the content is these days. Mm -hmm. But nothing original. I feel like these movies are different. They're, They're good. They're pretty good. I agree. Some sequels and franchises get worse over time, but it does seem like Mission Impossible just continues to level up. Oh, yeah. Like, they're still good. Like, spoiler alert, we enjoyed this movie. Yeah. Spoiler and alert. action isn't necessarily my cup of tea, mm-hmm. but it was so entertaining and thrilling, and the action sequences blew my mind. Oh, yeah. I 100% agree. I mean, Tom Cruise... Controversial figure, but we can't he's argue that he's not a great action star. You he know? knows what he's doing. He really does. He really does. And I think when you're Tom Cruise, you probably inspire everyone around you to be excellent. Like, sure. demand excellence. And because of that, just everyone's on their A game. Oh, yeah. Everyone. Just the quality of all the scenes and the action. Oh, the acting, the cinematography, direct, everything was really good. Unbelievable. Really good. And... <laughs> Sorry, for a ahead. franchise that started in 1996, a great year, but for a franchise that started <laughs> in 1996, that's I know. a lot. Shelby's as old as the Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> Can you believe that? They're a lifetime old. <laughs> Crazy. So. My Crazy. life. Shelby's basically one Mission Impossible movie. There you go. <laughs> It's but crazy. It's crazy. But yeah. that shows the strength of the franchise. It does. You know, this is a movie made by Paramount Pictures. Tom Cruise's home, because right, they also did the Top Gun movies, and they have been able to sustain the franchise for over 25 years. That's for a big sure. deal. And for some background, if y'all don't know, but the show is basically a reboot. The movie. The movie. For y'all who don't know, the movie is a spinoff of a TV show from the 1960s. I know that our parents and grandparents, they grew up watching that, so... It's interesting that this movie franchise has really become a thing of its own. Because yeah, it's actually sure. it's actually just a reboot, but mm-hmm. it's become so much more than that. And it's true, like our parents and grandparents are really into Mission Impossible. Oh yeah. Like they are fans. I remember growing up, like we would watch those movies. Like they really like them. Hundred percent. So they were, I'd probably say, more excited to see this movie than us. <laughs> and we just kind of tagged along for the fun of it, but we enjoyed it. Yeah, we, pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly I surprised. I thought it was really good, and I thought the director Christopher McQuarrie did a really good job as well. And he's worked with Tom Cruise a lot. Mm. Like he did the last few Mission Impossible movies. So I do think when you have the same director, main Makes star, a difference. like. Yeah working together, it does make a difference. And you right. can see that chemistry, that connection on screen. It 100% translates. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many action movies these days. This is a lot. Too many. Everyone, you know, wants to be Tom Cruise jumping off of things. Yeah. I mean, it you sells, know? right? That's why studios are making them. People want to see action movies. But let's make them more creative or unique. Yeah. You can and tell. I think this one did a good job. Like, it was a little agree. different. Yeah, I think Mission Impossible is definitely some of like the best action content of today. Yes. Which says a lot. Agree. Totally. So that's a bit of the background. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it goes into our expectations as well. They've yes. all I re- we, you know, since the reboots of the two thousands and twenty tens, you know, we've seen most of them. And they've all been really good action films, you know. So yeah. we're expecting a lot from this and there's been so much hype and the previews and 
everything. You all probably saw oh the goodness. iconic clip in the trailer when Tom Cruise is like on the motorcycle, on a motorcycle and he's and just like jumps, <laughs> and then it's just like him in the air going down. I can't. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Literally insane. And we all knew that was coming in the movie, but I think they did a really good job building up they to set it. up so well. They do a good job building wow. up suspense in the actual yes. film, you know? Completely agree. Crazy. So the uh, previews hyped it up a lot, and yes. just every Mission Impossible movie, they're like, Tom Cruise, ah! So... <laughs> the stunts, the they're stunts. crazy! So, like we've talked about... Tom Cruise is just such a movie star, you know. He's a true he's, movie star. People try to be like him, but they haven't. No one's come close yet, I think. I agree. I think to the same level. Who do you think is the second biggest movie, like action star? Um, I think a lot of people would say maybe The Rock. He's someone I think of. Yeah, I think that's a good one. You know, as someone who doesn't really watch action, I was going to be like, Liam Neeson. <laughs> no, that's that's good. <laughs> Keanu Reeves? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. Jason Statham. Like oh, yeah, he, okay. But this right. is an older generation. Like, I don't right. think there's a younger action New star. Yeah. coming, yeah. Yeah. No, I but I think The Rock's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'd say because The Rock is in so many, like, action yeah. movies. Oh, isn't Gerard Butler now starting to do some of that stuff? What does he act? I, I generally can't name things Gerard Butler's been in in the past, like, five years. He's always in, like, the knockoffs. Like... Remember, it was, like, White House Down, and then he was in, like, the DC Fallen movie. But that like, was also 10 years ago. Well, <laughs> my point. Exactly, um, exactly. Not a lot of new action stars. No, that's a good point. There's mm-hmm. an opening for There's a young action opening. star. Tom, Tom Cruise is, guess what? Do you know how old he is? He has, he looks amazing, but he's been around so long. I feel like 60? He's 61. Isn't that wild? Crazy? He looks great. He's sixty-one, jumping off cliffs. He looks great. We skydiving, wish we could. hanging off the side of a plane. It, I would not do that now. <laughs> Literally, I would not do that now. So the fact that he's sixty-one is unbelievable. Unreal. So iconic. I saw that and I thought he was like maybe like fifty-five, maybe, and I was like, he's sixty-one. So oh, the things that he's doing at that age are unbelievable. So. Yeah, going going in, we were just like, you know, Tom Cruise is gonna go crazy, and that's why. Even though I was like, oh, super excited, I knew he, Tom would deliver. Oh yeah, and he did, and he did. And what was cool was that, as you mentioned, we were with our family, and we actually saw an early screening of Woo! the movie for fans. Yes, so it was a special fan experience, mm-hmm. and we saw it with you know our grandpa and our uncle and. We got free posters. We got free specialty pens that yes. said Impossible Mission Force. Yes, IMF. So we're part of it now. Woo. <laughs> I'm, we're Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Don't mess I'm with fighting. us. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really cool. We got to see an early screening. Yes. Um, I think we saw it on a Monday. And what was cool is because of the special screening, they showed clips before it with behind the scenes looks yes. and how certain seats were made. Looks at the different premieres around the world, a message from Tom, the director. Like, it was good. Yeah, it was really cool. So, highly nice. recommend. And we saw this, as we mentioned, we, you know, if you listen to other episodes, we have family in Mississippi. We saw this in Mississippi. So, if they have special fan experiences in Mississippi, they have it in a city, they near, have it you. In a city okay. near you. <laughs> so, if there's a look movie you're excited about, look for it. Yeah, it usually happens like a few days before the official wide release. Yeah, and it's the same price as, you know, a normal ticket, which is crazy. And you get. Usually, well, this is our first time doing a special screening, but I assume most of them will have similar, like, giveaways and, like, special content. Exactly. So, that was awesome. Very cool. So, our experience watching it was already, there was a lot of yes. excitement and even better Agreed. than a normal, normal movie. Yes. So, as we talked about, a lot of, you know, action films don't have the best, like, story. It's just action, and action. typically miss a lot of the plot. Right, right. And character development. But, I'd say they did a good job with that in this one. So there are a couple themes. I'd say the biggest theme was AI and technology. Interestingly enough, I feel like that's a theme in a lot of content these days. That's the topic everyone wants to delve into. AI, technology. (laughs) We're scared of it. Ah, 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 Siri. Save us. Siri. Alexa, Alexa. stop. (laughs) Stop her. Megan, Megan. (laughs) Yeah. So, yes. Yes. AI and technology was a big theme because AI, the entity, was like the villain. 
Yes. This technology cyber being called the entity was the villain. Mm -hmm. And I'd say the concerns over AI and the fact that we can't control AI and that it's bad was at the source of the tension in the film. Yes. So, yeah, basically the plot was the mission that was sent to Tom Cruise, Ethan, his character, was there is this key. Mm -hmm. We need you to get this key. We can't tell you what it unlocks, but you need to get it and return it back to the U.S., the U.S. government. So then Tom Cruise is like, what is the point of this key? I need to know what this is about before I just find it and hand it over. So he does his research and he finds out that this key unlocks the entity and gives you power over this AI that gives you all this control and influence and, and power. access to in particular, like, other people's defense mechanisms. Yeah, and their government data. Government secrets and mm-hmm. data. So it's almost like a military intelligence weapon. Exactly. So that Don't the US, put that in the wrong hands. Right. So the U.S. is like, we need to have this first before China, mm-hmm. Russia, yes. whatever country it is, mm-hmm. because whoever has the entity is the most powerful country in the world. Mm-hmm. So, But Tom was like, no, this would be destroyed. No one should have that much power. Right. So that's that's the plot of the movie, basically. Mm-hmm. The struggle with, between Tom, the U.S. government, other governments trying to get yeah, this Yeah, other key. people trying to get that as right. well. Right. And tr- trying to figure out what exactly is the entity, mm-hmm. where is it located, because it's kind of like we were saying, the cloud. Like, what does that it even mean? It's obscure, yeah. Right. It's unclear. So just learning more about what the entity actually is is a big part of the movie. And having recently watched Megan, I feel like that's almost similar. Oh, like, yeah. it's unclear what can Megan actually do. It's like we don't really know the full powers, capability of technology. Exactly. So um, for y'all who don't know what Megan is, basically, um, it was a movie that came out January uh, 2023 of this year. And... Um, <laughs> Megan is this doll that this company makes that's trying to be on the cutting edge of like you know, toys, technology. And Megan is a robot, but a doll, like a very advanced doll that they make a prototype of. And um, Allison Williams creates Megan and uses Megan um, with her niece. And then she realizes that they have a very strange relationship together. Megan is basically like a human doing all these things. And... They don't know what Megan's capable of. And she starts becoming violent and all Killing this other people. stuff. Killing <laughs> people. Really yes. crazy. So, really crazy. So Megan and Mission Impossible, very similar movies. The Entity the and ent- Megan yes. both show the dangers of artificial intelligence. Exactly. So a lot of movies are dealing mm-hmm. with this Delving theme that, right yes. now. So it was that was the main mm-hmm. theme for sure of this movie. I'd say another big theme was friendship. And the mm. chosen family. I'd say Tom Cruise and his chosen family are kind of like misfits, people that don't fit in and that have oh, been yeah. cast out. Outlaws. Outlaws, yes. And they're all good friends. So it's Luther, Benji, Ilsa. They're all together with Ethan, you know, fighting crime, taking on missions, mm. accepting the choice. Right. But, you know, these in the movie, they're outside forces trying to threaten their friendship and chosen family. Right. And... Tom, I'd say, is worried throughout, like, what will happen to his friends, because he knows people know that's the way to hurt him. Exactly. So uh, it was it was cool to see, you know, all of them coming together, uh, Tom, Benji, Luther, Ilsa, and now Grace has become a part of uh, IMF as well, as we see at the end of the movie. And it's great to see that they all have each other. Um, But it shows that AI, the entity, knows that that's their weakness. So it's showing, like, not how how can we all look out for each other when the enemy is, like, actively, you know, trying to target us and pit us against each other. So it provides a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because literally at one point it's either um, Gabriel, the entity, uh, was like, it's either Ilsa or Grace. One of them's going to die. And Tom's going to be like, how do I save them both? Oof. Tough, tough. Very tough. And also related, trust is a big theme because there are a lot of blurring lines in this movie between good and evil. 
the U.S. government was acting very sus. It was giving killer Kittridge, mm-hmm. the character who runs the IMF. So you've seen him in previous Mission Impossible films, right? And he was really passionate about getting this key, almost to the point where instead of just trusting his agents to get it, he got involved and was meeting with Vanessa Kirby's character, who's like a known thief arms dealer, to try and buy it from her. Right. Which doesn't seem right. No. If you're part of, like, the intelligence community in the U.S., you should go through the right protocols yeah, and not channels illegal stuff. to yeah. get the key. So that was suspect. He was going to pay her, like, $10 billion, $100 billion. 100, something, something crazy. crazy. A crazy amount of money. How can we trust the U.S., especially if, you know, the head of the IMF is doing these shady deals? Very You shady. know? So power, great segue again, is a huge theme in this movie because, like, who can we trust with this power? Can anyone be trusted with this power? And this whole fight is happening because everyone wants the power of the entity in their hands. Yeah, and I think we see that with a lot of countries throughout history and movies. Like, mm-hmm. the fight for power and control leads to a lot of conflict. Oh, yeah. And it's... Scary because really, should anyone have that much power or money or wealth? Probably not. I think it's interesting because you have Ethan Hunt not wanting anyone to have access to the entity or power because it's too much power for any one country or nation. But you have the U.S. government and all these CIA agents going after Tom because they're like, no, we need it. And then you have this younger CIA agent on the case who, if you watch Grey's Anatomy... Is uh, recently on that, yeah. and he kept asking his supervisor, like, "What if you know Ethan's right, or what if he has good intentions?" And his supervisor wasn't having it. But it's true. Like, maybe we should realize it's probably the smart thing or the good thing for people to not have all the power instead of just willingly like, "Oh, this is what our country wants and needs. I'm going to make it happen." No, it's true. Power has. <laughs> Been bad for humans for forever. Yeah. <laughs> Cause a lot of issues. Cause almost every <laughs> war. Literally. It's a mess. So lots of social commentary yeah, in this Which movie. I think, again, not your typical action movie by having all that commentary. Exactly. That nice. No, we liked it. We liked it. So more of our favorite moments. Mm-hmm. As we talked about, the action scenes in this movie are insane. Everyone was good. They're all so good. So every action in the beginning... Tom Cruise is starting his mission, and he's told he's got to go to this airport, Abu Dhabi, to find the first half of the key. And he goes, and chaos ensues. And Benji and Luther are in the back, you know, using their technology on the computer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Wait, you remember the guy from Kim Possible? Like, the black guy in the... (laughs) It was giving way, you're right, like, in the closet. Yeah. (laughs) They were probably in a closet, like in a back room somewhere. Oh, yeah, being like, Tom, go here. No, they're coming for you. Yeah, Um, they were accessing all the cameras. cameras. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that was was a really good scene because Tom's trying to, like, run from all the people in the airport. He's fooling everyone in the airport um, uh, because he has the U.S. government coming Mm -hmm. after him. He also has, you know, he has everyone coming after him. Other people, and then Tom somehow escapes... Somehow. And then is running on the roof of the airport. Great. Great <laughs> so good. scene. So good. Yes. And to what we said, Laura, right at the beginning, every action scene was great. Right after this, they end up in Rome because the flight that Grace was on with the key was going to Rome. Yes. But the CIA finds this out and gets her arrested when she arrives in Rome. Tom, Ethan Hunt, breaks her out of the... A holding, and then they have to do a huge car chase in Rome to get away from the Roman police, get away from the CIA, and get away from the people who want the key. <laughs> they were escaping everyone. It was crazy. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yes, and as we talked about, since we did the special fan experience, we got to see you know behind the scenes takes, and they're saying that in that scene, um, they were actually uh, handcuffed together. Yeah, Tom and Grace. Yes. And Tom Cruise was driving handcuffed and one-handed in this tiny yellow for buggy. He for was real. For real driving one-handed. Handcuffed. Handcuffed. What? Crazy. No. It, it, 
And if you watch oh the scene, gosh. it's hard to believe because they're ripping around and it just looks so difficult. So the fact that he actually was driving one hand handcuffed is unbelievable. So hats off to you, Tom Cruise. Unbelievable. Of course, the really hyped up scene, Tom jumping off his motorcycle off a cliff, and you didn't know where he was going. But the setup was he had to get on this moving train, the Orient Express, Mm -hmm. to get access to the key and save Grace, who was impersonating Vanessa Kirby's character on the train. Mm -hmm. Of course, Gabriel and the entity, the bad guy, speeds up the train. So Tom was initially just going to try and jump on off his motorcycle, normal way, when when it slowed down. Yeah, normal, normal. Normal way. But unfortunately, the train sped up. So instead, Benji was like, "Uh, Tom, you have to do something else. So the only way for Tom to get on the train was to literally be on this mountain peak and skydive. Jump off his motorcycle and skydive. And the way he entered the train, too, (laughs) was just... Literally, there was, like, a very tense moment on the train. People were about to start fighting. And then Tom Cruise, he literally, like, is flown through the window. (laughs) Glasses breaking everywhere. He has, like, the parachute on. It was... Crazy. He crushed it. Yeah, I can't believe he actually did that. Unreal. And you'd think, oh, my oh at this point, wow, they had that big scene. That's it. No! no. <laughs> there was this even crazier scene. So the entity and Gabriel are crazy. So Gabriel decides to blow up parts of the bridge that the train's about to cross. Yes. And he jammed, you know, the brakes on the train so that you couldn't so it's stop not the train. So he was going to kill everyone on the train. Kill everyone. <laughs> so Ethan and Grace are like, we got to stop the train. So they find a way to unstall it and jam the brakes to start to try and get the train to stop. The bridge. The bridge blows up. The train starts to fall down the side. So you literally have Ethan and Grace dangling in train cars that are about to fall into this river. And they have to climb up against gravity climb up the train cars to survive. It was insane. My favorite part was when the train car was like perpendicular to the to the bottom, like the river. So it was like dangling and they were insane. hanging on and there was like a piano that was about to fall and hit them. It was crazy. And and Tom Cruise was like, Grace, you're gonna have to jump. So and she's like, what do you mean jump? Like jump across the train car that that's I'm about dangling. to like that's gonna fall into the ocean. It's gonna oh fall gosh, into rocks. Crazy. It was wild. And then right after she jumped, like the piano fell and it would have literally killed them. It was crazy. That was a really good scene. So basically, every action scene, every action Nuts. sequence, so well done, so entertaining. Just, oh, suspense. My gosh. Literally so suspenseful, most speechless just thinking about it, because I don't even like action (laughs) like that, but it was so good. Yeah, so we had a lot of favorite moments. We did. We did. Uh, Very, yeah, pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. But of course, you know, there were some not so good moments. I guess for me, there were points Mm -hmm. where the plot was a little confusing. I I think AI is so... It's tough. Like, vague, and it's not... Like, AI is the villain, but it's like how... Mm-hmm. It, it's like thinking of the concept of the cloud. Like, it's just hard to grasp. That's so I think that, especially Gabriel in the beginning, and I guess just all throughout the movie, I'm like, is Gabriel AI? Is he it the host like he's of like the, host the entity? Or like, yeah, the embodiment of the entity. Like, that was not clear. Because yeah. he knows he knows Ethan mm-hmm. and, like, killed his wife. Or friend or something. Or friend, like, someone who was ago. important to him earlier in the series. And now he's back, mm-hmm. but he's also like AI because you can see it him. Like it didn't, it wasn't a hundred percent clear. I'm hoping in part two that's clarified. Yeah, but who knows? Spoiler alert: a character dies, and when Ilsa dies, Ilsa being a part of the IMF crew, mm-hmm. you know, part of the chosen family. So her death was really sad. It was. Of course, Gabriel predicted either Grace or Ilsa would die. And Ilsa is fighting Gabriel, and then he stabs her. Ugh. And it was so sad. That was one of my least favorite moments because Gabriel predicted it, and I didn't want him to be right. Ugh. Tough. 
But also, Ilsa was a good character. She's a badass woman fighting crime. Like, I liked her. Yeah, I agree. I, I really liked Ilsa. It was sad that she died. It was. Yeah, we never liked that. No. Um, we were talking about this movie with our family, and it, we were excited that, you know, Luther and Benji, you know, didn't die. They're still around. But we were saying that, you know, Elsa died, and then it just feels like she was just replaced by Grace. Kill and, one woman, replace her. Right? And it just felt like, oh, really I like. guess the woman, you just replace her for another one. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of like how it felt. Um, so that's kind of a critique of the movie. It wasn't, you know, super diverse, but, you know an action Tom Cruise movie. I agree. I guess going in I didn't think it'd be diverse. Yeah, so exactly. Was... We weren't expecting that. Yeah. And like the only, you know, black character is Luther. They had, you know, the you there it was like an oh, American the younger agent. Stay agent. He's um, so cute. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> There's two. Yay. Woo. <laughs> Yay. We're the black woman. Yay. Like, yeah, screaming. It's fine. But regardless, <laughs> we still like the movie. We still like the movie. Okay. On to our categories. Yes. Who did you love to hate? Oof. I would say Grace. Mm-hmm. That's Haley Atwell's character who was initially like a really professional thief and then joins like the IMF chosen family. Mm-hmm. She accepts the choice. And she had really great character development and growth because in the beginning she was so annoying. But I do love to hate her because she was annoying. She kept stealing the key and she got herself roped into this really scary stuff with Tom Cruise and Gabriel. And it felt like she kept putting herself in bad situations. It was like, Grace, stop it. Just trust Ethan. Stop. Stop. I agree. She was really annoying in the beginning, but Mm -hmm. then she definitely had a good redemption arc. For sure. Yes. And now she's part of the IMF. Which is exciting. I think yeah. she's a good bet. Yeah. She was good. Um, and we also love to hate Paris, who uh, was the Asian woman from uh, Gardens of the Galaxy. I recognized her. Yes. Yes. Um, she played like an assassin. Yeah. Like a really... <laughs> she was kind of crazy. Scary, villainous assassin. Um the actress's name is Pom Clementif. Pom Clementif. Don't know if we pronounced that right. But the actress was great. And like Laura said, she's been in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. But she was scary. <gasps> she played crazy. Oh, my gosh. She really played <laughs> crazy. Such a scary villain. But similar to the Atwell's character in Grace, she had a good arc. And at the end... Gabriel, of course, turns on her and stabs her. And then she ends up saving Ethan Hunt and Grace from their death. Yeah, that was huge because they were they were done. It was looking tough. <laughs> they we were not, not going to make it. They were going to make it through. So it was huge that they were able to survive. Yeah. So we loved Paris for that. And she was also a fun villain. She yeah. was very entertaining. She was scary but fun. Like she was good at fighting. And I know. But villains we didn't like, uh, under a hate to hate, Gabriel and Kitridge. Yeah. Not Gabriel our favorites. Gabriel being the embodiment or host of the entity. He had killed someone that Tom Cruise knew, so we don't like that. No. And then he was just evil. Like, he was killing people. He was going to kill everyone on the train. Try, yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was, he, there was nothing redeeming about him. Yeah, he was bad. Nothing redeeming about no. him. And he clearly just wanted all the power. And he also played Paris, like his yeah. right hand woman. Like, why do you have Paris doing your dirty work and then you kill her? Oh my god! Don't like that. Yeah, he was horrible. And then Kitridge, why? Why should he we trust you? At the beginning, very shady. sus and shady behavior. Shady. Not trusting him, and he also just doesn't seem like he has the actual IMF agents mm. in mind. Like, he just I asked agree. Ethan Hunt to do things, not really caring, and even the message he sent Ethan Hunt for the mission, he was like, if anything happens to your friends, that's, what, that's what's going to happen. It's like, like, oh. So uh, you really okay. don't care. <laughs> like, I would right. not accept the mission if you're telling me it doesn't matter what happens to, like, my friends. Yikes. Yeah. So I don't like him. Yeah, I don't like him. But we do have a lot of love to love. Yes, we do. I mean, Ethan is so great. Like, Ugh. 
Luther, Benji, the whole squad. The whole honestly. squad. You can throw Ilsa in there, too. Yeah, they're fun. They clearly have good chemistry because, right, they've been doing this a while. Right. They are badasses at what they do. Luther and Benji for, like, the computer yeah, stuff. Yeah, good comic relief, too. And Ethan, of course, is, like, the classic action hero. But he, it's interesting. He doesn't really do problematic stuff. No. no he's pretty, really like, like yeah. by the book. Like, this is what's right. This is what's yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. He's not really a flawed main character. I agree. I agree. I, he's he's a really good protagonist. Mm-hmm. Really good. Okay. On to our Whoa. newer segments. Uh, if y'all y'all have been listening, yes. we have a new segment called Eater Eater. Red flag, green flag, one, two, three. Woo. So we introduced this in our NBA playoffs episode. Yes. And basically we ask each other if something is a red flag, if this person is a red flag, and our thoughts. Yes. So, Laura, are you going to ask the first one? Yes. Shelby, is AI a red flag? Yes. Here's the thing. Obviously, technology has done a lot of really great things for us, right? We are recording this. We are using the internet. We have phones, laptops, you name it. Of course. I think technology is important. We need to advance in the culture. But I have never been a fan of Siri, Alexa. What? Not going to lie, chat GPT kind of freaks me out. The fact that they can write essays. I know. Like, we don't really know, I think, the depths of what this means. And even, I'm not, I never use Siri, but half the time it's like, hello, what do you want? I'm like, I didn't ask for you. Why are you listening to me? So I, maybe it's shades of red. There are levels. But I think in general, artificial intelligence, I don't think we know enough about it. And we are moving so quickly to use it and all these things. And it just worries me that we don't have enough testing or understanding or even knowledge of what this is. Right. And how it can be used, and even like how it could be used badly. Right. Because I think something like the entity, and also we're talking about Megan a lot, but something like Megan too, I feel like are things that can happen. Yeah, they have robots delivering food. Right. You see those little like robots. What on if the something that goes, what if it goes rogue? Like, what if it's just to run someone over? Like, that's crazy, but it exactly. can happen. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. So, yeah, I, I think I AI think is a red flag. I agree with that. Okay. Ooh, okay, Laura. I have a question for you. Is it a green flag to do all of your own stunts? Ooh. A very Tom Cruise question. This is a good question because I think, kind of like what we said before, shades of green. Because mm. I think for the viewer, it's so exciting. We're like, oh my gosh, Tom Cruise, he jumped off a cliff. Tom Cruise, he is holding on the side of a plane. I will never forget that. That came out almost That's like 10 years movie. ago. I think or that was movie. like 2015, 2016. Yeah. Literally, Tom Cruise was hanging on the side of a plane. Like, actually, that was crazy. Um, I think for the viewers, yes, it's a green flag. We love to see it. It's so exciting. So cool. Right? So cool. Unbelievable. But is it good on Tom Cruise's body? Is it good on his psyche? I mean, maybe. I, but I personally... Could, I would not do it. I could never. No. So, for like, if if you if that was like your husband or like your friend or your son, would you want you them so to do all of your own stunts? No. No, probably not. And it means you're like a risk taker. You're a daredevil. Is maybe it almost too much? Yeah. Is it a good thing like to be maybe such a daredevil? You need to be a bit more risk averse. You know? Right. So, I would say. For the audience, amazing, yes. But I think probably in general. For the person? Bad. Maybe you should probably do all a red your own flag. Stunts. Probably a red flag, yeah. yeah. Oof. So you wouldn't want to do Tom Cruise? No. <laughs> <laughs> For many reasons, but <laughs> doing it all of his own sense, I could not handle that. <laughs> Stay away. Well, um, I think I agree with you. I think yeah. that's a, it's a good, mm-hmm. it's a good response. Yeah, because if you were dating someone who's like, oh yeah, like I just jumped off a cliff off my off my motorcycle, that's that not so <laughs> irresponsible. That is not no really, no no. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no. So if you take it outside the context of like the, the movie. movie, you're like, yeah. that's 
a little concerning, concerning. right? I okay, agree. okay. No, so, I think you're right. <laughs> red flag, red flag. Okay, Laura. So, for Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one. Is it a watch or a wait? I think it's a watch. I think it's a watch. I agree. It's, it's a watch. It's so entertaining. It's a, it's a long movie, but it didn't feel like that. It's so it fast. It flew by. It flies by. The pacing's great. And, yeah, the story's good, the acting's pretty good, and the action scenes are just un- truly unmatched. I honestly, I read a review that someone said somehow they keep leveling up on the action. Right. I don't know how. It's really hard. They've been doing this, right, for over 25 years. Right. But somehow the level of action is better and With more each movie. With each movie. That doesn't make any sense. No. Because I remember... When Tom Cruise was hanging on the side of the plane in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation 2015, I thought that was the peak of action movies. I really like did. Nothing could be better. Right? He was hanging on the side of a plane that was taking off. Unbelievable. Do we realize how fast that is? That That's was insane. He was on, hanging on the side of a plane that was taking off. I thought that was the peak. I was like, they did it. They can't. They can't do anymore. But no, like we said, somehow each movie gets better and better. I can't believe it. I can't He's, believe it. Really doing something great. Right. And I will say, another good thing about this movie is that it was clear it was a part one. I know. It was in the name. We knew this was part one of the movie. Yeah. Complete opposite of what Spider-Verse did. And if you listen to our episode, you know we didn't love how Spider-Verse handled the fact that at the end, to be continued. No. Let me know it's a part one. I know. I also think it actually had a resolution. I agree. Like, they somehow were able to have all this action, and at the end, okay, Tom has all the keys. He finds out that there's a submarine that he needs to go to to unlock the entity. I know. We have, like we have he has the key, he knows the where to go. We have this a is where the mission idea of what's next. They resolve everything so far, and it's like, okay, this is what's next. It was just really well concluded, part one. I know, and it ended, you know, on a high note. Because, Somehow. as we said with Spider Verse, Spider Man across the Spider Verse, it just the en- we didn't like the ending because it was no. a cliffhanger. We didn't know it was a part one. Nothing was resolved. No- and no- exactly nothing was resolved. And it was just like Miles is kidnapped, whatever, all this stuff. And you left like what? Like it was a it disappointing felt ending. Like a part one. Where the this yes. movie it probably could have been a conclusion. I know this had a very like satisfying resolution yes. at the end, and you're excited for the next movie. Mm-hmm. I remember we were living with our family. We we're like, wow, part two oh is going to be part so two good. Summer. Can't wait. Right? So we just, we thought it was a really good wrap up at the end. It was great. Mm-hmm. So good. So clearly, y'all should go to the movie theater yes. go watch. and watch Mission Impossible The Reckoning Part One. Yes. It's good. We recommend. Even if you don't like action, like us, it's not our first choice, but it was so entertaining and yes. thrilling. And the action scenes were just unbelievable. It really was. Okay. On to our What to Watch segment. Yes. Obviously part two. Come on. We will be there next summer ready for part two. Yeah. That'll be, it'll be really good. Um, And honestly, whatever Tom Cruise does, people are going to go out and see it. (sighs) He brings us to the theaters. So Top Gun Maverick last year. Come on. We know what. Top Gun Maverick was, yeah. That was a moment. It was a moment. Tom knows what he's doing. The volleyball scene that everyone talks about. <laughs> I'm excited for part two, and, you know, we'll see what else he does. Yes. We'll see. We'll see. Produces good content. He does. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. Hope y'all enjoyed this Appreciate episode. the support. Yeah. Follow, go follow us follow. on Instagram, TikTok, like, Twitter, at Sisters Who Watch. Yes. And go watch. check out our website, sisterswhowatch.com. Yes. Yes. Please you give us five you. stars, no. comment on our Instagram, sisters reach out. We'd love to hear what you think. Oh, Thank bye you. Bye. Bye.